So this year, I've been very, very tired. I wasn't expecting this outcome, but seriously, it feels like every single day I just want to sleep. But I'm not saying this from the angle of being depressed. I'm just saying this as the angle of shit. I seriously just want to chill now. Now, have you guys ever related to this feeling where I think I have enough? I'm content with where I am. And even though I haven't achieved exactly what my ego thinks I wanted, but I'm finally understanding that the reason why it hasn't happened is not just because of my incapability to achieve it, but it's because of circumstantial events, subconscious belief, the way I saw myself growing up, how I was raised, the environment I'm immersed in that may have temporarily delayed me from getting the things my ego wants right away. And the question that I have for you is, are you still going to keep struggling your way through your goals and neglect the inner child within you who deserves all the love that you have to give to her? And seriously, just start enjoying life every day for how it is. So hi everyone, I'm Patty, and if you guys are enjoying my video, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a comment and let's get started. So the reason why I decided to film this topic spontaneously is because I've been running really, really fast, but I'm not exactly sure if I'll be happy if I get to the goal, but I'm still approaching it in this very hustling ways. I actually don't recall a day this year where I've fallen asleep peacefully in a way where I wasn't thinking about metrics. I wasn't thinking about what kind of video topics, thumbnails, or the way I speak should improve in the next one. From January to mid-May this year, I could say that about 90% of the days were spent sleeping at 12 to 2 a.m. And in those time frames, I'd either be trying to design the next thing or think of the next idea or have some epiphany shifts that I want to make in my content. And those epiphany shifts would sometimes last from 12 to 5 a.m. And every single time this happened, it felt like I was so active and so awake at the times where my body should be resting. But I just couldn't allow myself to rest. And it honestly made me feel really scared in the daytime where I would get really tired and I don't want to film. And I have to be honest with you that I don't always feel like talking about positive motivations every two days. And it sometimes gets really tricky where you're trying to motivate your audience, but you don't exactly embody what you are saying. And so I had to really step back and ask myself, how could I truly embody this on a consistent basis? So I don't feel like a fraud inspiring people to really get what they want in life when I myself was kind of struggling to get it together at some point. But luckily these last few days, I finally learned to find that balance. And that balance just came from literally surrendering. Now, if you are a control freak like myself, you would know that surrendering feels really scary. It feels like if I don't spend midnights analyzing how I'm going to do better in the next video, then I'm going to fail. If I don't discipline myself to get it together every single day by forcing my action, then I'm going to fail. But surrendering pretty much means that when midnight comes, you really allow yourself to sleep. You really allow yourself to get that rest that your body needs. And that means by stop thinking about things you shouldn't be thinking about. It means you allow your mind to finally relax and just trust that as long as you love yourself, the universe will always give back the kind feelings that you are seeking out in the outer world. And you know what's interesting is that I've been waiting to manifest a certain outcome in my life since last year. But I guess this year, I really honed down on the fact that I am a master manifester. And if I'm capable of achieving all my outer goals, then I'm also capable of manifesting exactly what I wanted. But the harder I try to stay disciplined, the more I thought about how can I really level up in a short amount of time frame, the more I was seeing these opposite evidences every day for months. Checking my phone and seeing the same bullshit that I don't wanna see. Checking my emails and seeing the same kind of emails that I don't wanna see. I would constantly manifest all this wonkiness to the point where I got scared of checking every single thing outside of me. I was scared of checking my emails, scared of checking my phone to see another message requesting me to do something or updating me on things that I don't want to know about. And I was asking myself frequently, why is it still happening? How can I end this feeling of being harassed? Does that mean I take myself to Manly and do more swims? Does that mean I go to the beach and do more beach clips? But finally, in May of this year, 
I realized that because I've tried those methods and it didn't exactly eliminate my problems, the true solution was to just accept that this is how everything is today, but it's not permanent. And this feels really uncomfortable when you feel like the moment I accept that this is my reality, that means that I'm not trying to move forward from it. But did you guys know that the more you accept that all this weird shit is happening around you, but you can still love yourself enough to not vibrationally dip, that's when the universe will start handing you more and more evidences of things that will work out in your life. See, even though since January, my phone was hacked, all these weird messages were sent out to people in an embarrassing way, I was told to go and do OnlyFans. My family member passed away recently from cancer, but I was starting to learn that this is the universe's way of teaching me how to really, really love the inner child within me that has always wanted my own soothing, my own affection, my own reminder that every morning I would tell myself that I love you so much and that you don't have to understand everything today. For my whole life, I've always tried to logically understand, okay, if I'm seeing these weird harassing messages, how did I manifest this? Or if one of my videos did really well, how did I achieve this? So how can I logically recreate my success and logically eliminate all the distressing situations? And there were just so many times where I don't know. I don't know how to eliminate the distressing situations. I don't know how to avoid painful emotions. And just being able to accept that it's okay, that you cannot avoid the emotions is what true self-love means. And this was something that I was just way too scared to even do for myself that the minute I really turn inward and be like really, really soft with myself, that everything was going to fall apart because a part of success was using the masculine force to achieve your goals. So that's why I'm trying to remind you that the basis of every single manifestation in your life is your relationship to the little child within you. That little child within you where at five years old, she loved wearing bow ties. She loved wearing fluffy skirts. She loved the idea of being a ballerina. She loves K-pop. She loves dancing, music, art, and just running around the grass field. But because those experiences I felt were taken away from me, I was too scared to actually be that authentic self who always loved the color pink, who loved being girly, who loved being soft, because being soft meant that I had to be vulnerable to this world. And that was what I feared of the most. And as far as I know, I'm starting to realize how beautiful it is to find acceptance in the fact that my bank account hasn't changed. In that if I open my email tomorrow again, I'm still going to see the same things I don't want to see in my email list. But being able to change your relationship with those circumstances is what will truly shift your reality. And I also want to remind you that every single time you see somebody else going to the exact beaches, the exact luxury vacations, or achieving the exact kind of success that you yourself wanted, and you know you've been working hard on yourself day in and day out, but you didn't manifest that exact experience. I want you to trust that as long as you surrender to the process and again, come back to soothe yourself, that no matter who's going to leave you behind, you will always have that little girl's back. See, I even remembered all the heartbreaks that I went through at the time where it was just so painful. And the reason why it was painful was because I kept telling my inner child that the only way I can have your back is if this guy validated me. And the one reminder that has really helped me shift into this surrendering, giving up, kind of not giving up mode is reminding myself every single morning, as soon as I wake up from my nightmares, that I'm proud of you today. You've done very well now. And I repeat these affirmations in my head, no matter how bad my dreams were. Even though a few seconds ago, I would dream about really horrific things, scary things that makes my body feel so tight and tense as if I was really coming out of that situation. But instantly I remind myself that my new reality is that everything is loving in my environment because I tell myself all the time now that I have your back. I will always stay by your side. No matter who leaves you behind to go and live their best life without you, I will still have your back every single morning. 
and no matter how many times you have to suddenly break down at 2 a.m. and you're just like shit I'm gaining weight again but I tried so hard to not go back to that state and I feel so scared yeah literally in one of my videos I felt like my face got puffier and my whole body was starting to get a bit puffy and I understand that I'm nowhere near the definition of you know big but that made me cry 2 a.m. thinking that I feel so tired to not eat sugar so how am I going to slim back down if I let myself go but you know what happened afterwards I reminded myself that it's okay honey this is the worst it's going to get tomorrow we're gonna start pouring water in those long cups and we're gonna drink them about five six times a day and those are the pivotal points that determine if you're going to cross that obstacle or not. Okay, it's fine to cry and break down the most nonsense thing. But then how you manage yourself and the things you tell yourself after that will really shift your reality. So from that point onwards, what I literally did was tell myself, don't worry, honey. We're just going to drink more and more water so that you don't crave random food. And from drinking water, I also told myself, look, I know your muscles are sore, but let's just do a bit of stretching. Let's just go down a yoga mat and do this 30 minutes cardio, this tiring jumping cardio for 30 minutes only, and we'll stop. And I remember the first few days of doing that as we are approaching winter, it was really painful. My muscles were aching and I just felt like I don't feel motivated to work out in this environment. If I was at the ocean water right now, I could easily smash 20 to 30 laps. But because I'm not in those locations, even 10 push-ups and 20 squats feels hard to do. But again, I remind myself, Patty, we're going to fucking get through this. We're going to fucking end this year in a winning way. And that's how I was able to, in a way, reparent or coach myself to do the things that will get me to where I want to be. If you don't work out and you let your body stagnate, your mind will also slow down and therefore you can't produce the high quality work. And I was really aware of this and that's why I broke down. But the minute you're able to really get back up and realize that, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to give it my best shot for today when I can so I can respect myself even more and more and more. Now the other topic that I'm so passionate about talking to you is self-respect. See, what does self-respect mean to you? To me, it means that you are able to repeat the number of times you keep promises to yourself. I recently discovered that the basis of true confidence is repetition. In order for you to be confident in yourself, you have to repeatedly remind yourself that your actions match your vision. If you say you want to be successful, at least you still attempt those 30 minutes cardio when you don't feel like it. At least you still attempt to put on some makeup and film yourself talking about something even on the days I didn't feel like it. And if you go through all my long videos, about 24 of them now, 40% of the time I didn't feel like filming it. But I told myself that discipline becomes motivation. So in other words, you don't feel motivated before you do the thing. You take the action first and then the momentum starts going. And that's where self-respect starts to come that I don't say that I want to be a YouTuber and I post one video every single month. Although people do that in a different kind of video style where it's really well edited and one video a month is good enough. But for me with where I am with my YouTube, I can't really be like this week, I don't feel like it simply because I don't feel like it. So we'll do it next week. Oh, I don't know what to talk about today. I don't know what to talk about the next day either. So let's just do it next week. And then you only see like one video every fortnight. That's not the kind of attitude or the way I approach life that would make me feel self-respect. So therefore, if I was treating myself like that, like being so wobbly with my goals, not being clear with who I need to embody in order to be where I want to be, how can the universe give me more resources, more opportunities, more leverage, more subscribers that trust in my work? As soon as I found this balance between not working way, way too hard, but also not slacking off either. And I found that sweet midpoint that I had to embody every day. Things just started flowing better in my life. And you can actually feel this by how your body is operating. My body used to feel stress and tension every single day. There was so much fear around, can I really do this? Can I really become this person? 
And every single time I doubt myself, my muscles would ache. And I would feel this tightness in my chest and in my back where shit, I really have to force myself in the beginning. But later on, as I start to surrender more and realize that the more I love myself and treat myself like somebody that, you know, loves their children the way I would raise a daughter, that's when the universe started giving me glimpses of all these little wins that I didn't expect I would have right now. And this also works the same with how lucky are you that you are so privileged to be able to substantially sleep while other people have to wake up early to be somewhere else. But you can actually get the rest that you need in order to keep continuing your work tomorrow. So this kind of positive feedback loop where how lucky are you that every single day you can stand up walk to the bathroom when you need to, cook yourself food when you want to. And all these little things is what helped you build this YouTube channel. And those positive reinforcement gives me so much energy to keep continuing, even though I feel like a total failure on some days. And I'd be like, why am I talking about how to stay disciplined when I'm starting to stagnate? Why am I talking about how to love yourself when I'm not treating myself right? So there were days where I did go back to that zone, but it was really easy to switch back from it. So what I'm trying to say to you is that Self-respect truly comes from a combination of little things that you do for yourself, such as reminding yourself things like, how lucky are you already to have a thriving health, to be able to get enough sleep each day, to have a laptop to do this thing, and couple this with reminding myself every single morning, I love you so much today. I have your back. I'll always be here for you. You've done enough already. You've done so well these last few months. And just really creating a loop of repetition of these small habits that blooms into something so much bigger than just subscriber growth. But it also blooms into things like permanent self-esteem increase. And that is such a powerful place to be in your life because as soon as you're able to love every single part of you, the part of you that breaks down at 2am, the part of you that cries out of nowhere quite regularly when you feel tired, the part of you that always gets sore muscles out of nowhere, the part of you that always stresses about achieving a certain goal without being in the right environment to really stay motivated. If you're able to love every single part of you without feeling ashamed, without hiding your true self, without trying to show the world that there's only one dimension to me, that's when the universe will truly correspond to you. The universe will be kind to you when you tell the universe that you are ready to receive the exact things that I was meant to receive when I came on earth. And this is the power of truly loving yourself, no matter what your circumstance shows you. The more you can really accept your own progress, your wins and your losses exactly for where you are. I promise you that every single thing that you've always wanted in this lifetime, the love that you think you will get from your success, which can actually be accessed now through your feeling state, the way you approach every area of your life gently, without too much force, just in a way where it's enough for today, that you feel like you've stretched yourself enough, that's when the universe will co-create with you the most beautiful, harmonious, loving experiences in your life where you finally feel still. You finally feel like I've arrived and I am exactly where I want to be internally. And through this internal feeling state of arriving, that's when your external reality will reflect the sense of wholeness, the sense of unity that you have with your present moment. And everything will miraculously work itself out for you.